Thank you very much. And thank you, Margaret, and thank you for the Universal Peace Federation for inviting me today. It's been a pleasure and the privilege. So I've got quite a few slides. So I'm going to go through them in a whirlwind. <laughs> so Robin's <laughs> going to show, uh, share the screen and show the PowerPoint, and then we're going to go. But the, the good thing about it is that it's why fathers matter. And while Robin's put in the PowerPoint, I'll, I'll just continue speaking. Um, as a company, we've been going for a charity, been, been going for um, since 2002, August 2002. We're a registered charity in 2009, and we offer yes. mentoring support, working domestic violence, antisocial behavior, parenting guides, and we also provide advice to most of the family. We now provide support to um, not only just um, men, but also to women and to children. Um, Robin, could you just uh, flick through the slides for us? But thank you. This is the first okay. time why men matter. We can skip, skip through this slide because we've done that one as well. So um, Next. it's fantastic. So on, on target. And we can go to the bottom of this one, please. Just click once. What we do is Mighty Men of Valor. The word valor means um, courage in the face of war. And we encourage men to realize that every single day is a battle. We just encourage men to just realize that when you, have a, when you have a family, especially in these times, it, it's a battle to make sure that you support, you're able to support them. So we also challenge the negative stereotypes of men in the UK. Lots of the, uh, negative, lots of the stereotypes that I used to hear about men was always negative. They're single fathers, they're absent fathers, they're no good, they're, they're, they're never at home supporting their children, they're in prison, they're in jail, um, they're alcoholics, they're drunks. I heard, used to hear so many negative stereotypes about men, but our aim is to eradicate the immoral, indecent and deviant behavior committed by some of these men and by touching the hearts of men. So um, if, if you can click further, a bit further. That, so what we do is transform the lives of boys and men for the better future. And we notice that if men care about their children, their partners and their community, it can change their behavior. So move to the next slide, please. Thank you. This is a brief picture of our website, and uh, I just wanted to let you see it, so just in case you decide to visit it. And the next slide is, um, these are the campaigns that we used to run, and we still do. One, and most of these campaigns have been launched at the House of the Parliament. So one is called Your Sperm, Your Responsibility. That is talking to young men that, you know, a lot of contraception is focused on women. And we're just saying to young men, without, without your sperm, there'd be no child. So <laughs> whose responsibility is it? Is it the woman's responsibility to protect herself from being pregnant? Or is it the man's responsibility making sure that he um, is responsible with, with, with who he has relationship with? So that was um, one of the campaigns we delivered mostly in, uh, in schools and talking to young boys and, and saying to them, you know, when you move into adulthood, you know, you could create life. So make sure that you ensure that you are responsible for your sperm. Uh, we had one of our other campaigns was Father for Life, and we were just saying to all fathers, once you're a father, you're a father for life, and that is responsibility that you have to take up. And once you are a father, just understand that that, that your sort of behaviour that you were before you got before you had a, had a family or even got married, that all those behaviours have to change, and you now need to behave a different way because you now are modelling a behaviour, and your children will learn from that. Then we talked about super dads and we just highlight that every dad, they may not see themselves as superheroes, but their children see them as superheroes. They're before Superman, before Batman, before Spider-Man, their dad is their superhero. So we encourage dads to realize that they are responsible and that, 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 that when they got them on their shoulders and they're doing all these great things with their, with their child, that they are super dads. And this was encouraging to, be, to, to take on that name. We also challenged uh, men in regards to being causing domestic violence and we encourage men to be against domestic violence. If you see domestic violence in any form, whether it's in your own relationship or in someone else's relationship, how to challenge that. And that's one of the things that we try to encourage. And also men against pornography. What we wanted to do is challenge men in regards to pornography because pornography may seem to some people innocent, but once they get into it, it can affect your life considerably. So that's the campaigns that we chat, we were fighting against. And uh, Robin, if we can go to the next uh, video. This, um, this is a picture just of, of our Fathers for Life campaign. It was over, so it seems like it's over, it was only yesterday, but it's actually 13 years ago 
So it's, it's a great um, campaign that we delivered. We also, um, the next slide will tell you that we delivered a campaign called No Excuse for Domestic Abuse. And we were just challenging men and just saying to, and saying to men, I think it's easier for a man to challenge another man about domestic abuse because if they men hear it from women, they may think, oh, you know, they just make them, all these things might come to their head. But if a man says it to them, <clears throat> it challenges them in, in, a, in a more direct way. And we're saying that domestic violence is a serious offence. If the police are called, it's likely for men to be prosecuted. And even verbal uh, aggression is considered to be domestic abuse. So as we move to the next slide, that this is really why the question is, do fathers really matter? So, uh, Robin, if you can go to the next slide for me, please. That's great. So do fathers really matter? And the question is, what is a father? And everybody knows, I think, who's watching at the moment, knows that you know, you've know got biological fathers, stepfathers, foster and adoptive fathers. Um, and the question is, which is better, having a, a fa no father or having a bad, bad father? And there's a question, you know, whether some people will say, you know, having no father is better than having a bad father. Also, there's this issue which we discussed earlier, even today, about what is the role of, of fathers? Is it a gender role? Is it a, in regards to, um, has the role of men and women changed in, over time? Um, also, what should fathers do with their families that make the difference? You know, is there, what, what component does a father add to the family? And we just heard Carol talk, you know, talk about bringing up her children by herself. So if that's the case, what component does a father have to bring, bring quality or <clears throat> to, the, to the relationship? If a father fails in his roles or duties, what happens to the child? And what does society do to, in, to enforce fathers to fulfill their role and behave as responsible fathers? So there's lots of questions that need to be answered regardless of what do, what do fathers, whether even fathers really matter. So Robin, if you could take the next slide for me, please. Thank you. So we also got the issue of the role of modern parenting in the family. And you know, should fathers be the breadwinner or are they the homemaker? Is mum the homemaker only? Uh, again, it's about role, roles, and these roles. I would say, you know, at the today, people question the roles. Whether what is a, what is a man's job? What is a female's job? Are there any males' jobs or any females' jobs? So it's a question that people are asking. If men are not the breadwinner, what is their role in the family? And you know, we've got a lot of stay-at-home dads now, but maybe men may not feel that's the role, and that's based on what they're their father grandfather would say they may feel that you know that's not the that's that's a, a female role and that again is, is challenging men's gender roles if men are the breadwinners that's oh, okay carry on let's leave it there leave it there if men are the breadwinners then, then you know should things change so we've got the question here is the argument against the need of fathers you know single parents is it a choice or, or no choice uh, fostered adopted children or stepfathers you know we've got absent fathers from birth due to death that we got um agreement family couples green that you know when they had a child that you know you go your way i go my way and um, the father being unknown the involvement through disagreement you know through things like divorce imprisonment em em uh, employment domestic domestic abuse could actually split the family to split the family apart so there's that there's all these things that could actually say can actually exclude the father from being part of the family home. And, with, and there's this question now, which people are trying to bring in, who's saying, you know, are saying, do you need to have a male? Could you have two, two females? Could you have same-sex relationships uh, to bring up children? So all these questions are actually asking, do fathers really matter? So Robin, if you can get to the next one for us, please. Thank you. There's also the question of power and control, and this comes a lot in domestic violence. So do fathers share the same power and control as mothers should, or should they? Um, so it's just a question. The ability of women to leave abusive relationships, the difficulty for, to leave an abusive relationship, because again, if the man's working, has the female got any financial power to leave? And does she, how does, and if she leaves, does that break up the family? Uh, the ability of women to work or to uh, not to um, to be a housewife um, and the ability of, of to have a career. So mothers controlling their own lives. So I can see that I've got about two, a couple, about two minutes left. So I'm going to just quickly go on to say there's issues regards to COVID. And I'll just talk, probably talk about this one 
and then I'll just uh, probably finish. The, do fathers matter? The, there's a, the effect of COVID on fathers, the inability to work to change. Um, COVID has caused a lot of is issues with regards to domestic violence in home, regards to the inability to work. There's financial challenges, there's family challenges, um, there's dual relationship challenges. People actually realizing that there's um, that people had families which even they didn't know about because of due to lockdown. So men who are unable to commit adultery because of lockdown. And parenting, spending more time with their children, is that a good, sometimes that could be that could be a good thing. But if it's an, if it's an abusive relationship, then it's a, it could be a bad thing. So relationships could be improved or deteriorate because of relation because of relationships. So I'm going to stop here because there's so many other um, slides I could talk about. But what I really wanted to say at the end of the day is, if a good father is around, a good father can show. Um, it helps reduce crime, reduce domestic violence, reduce child abuse, reduce child poverty, re reduce um, bad behaviour and encourages men to be good role models. So what I'm just saying to you, just, just arguing and saying in regards to if men do their role and they do it effectively, then that is fantastic. If men do their role badly, then that is also can actually cause harm to the family. And are in there. So thank you very much. And hope that hopefully that's a whistle tour. But if you wanted to see more of, of the slides or the whole PowerPoint, uh, please talk to Margaret. Thank you.